So today I'm going to show you how and why I made my anti-rat bar. Uh, these things get called all kinds of things, bam bars, tramp bars, rat bars. Uh, they come in a variety of different designs. Um, however, they all sort of generally serve the same purpose, which is to try to stop the, the axle. Firstly, what, what actually is axle wrap? Um, axle wrap is basically what happens when the axle rotates in an undesirable way, usually thanks to torque exerted by the wheels. Um, I've drawn a quick sketch to try and explain how this works. Uh, you can see here, this shows the axle and diff carrier, leaf spring, wheel, transfer box and prop. Um, and what happens is when uh, the wheel wants to turn this way, the reactionary force causes the axle to want to rotate this way. Um, and when that happens, when that happens, you can kind of get this happening. So as you can see here, the diff carrier wants to rotate this way. It causes the leaf springs to, causes the leaf springs to bend into this sort of S shape. And this UJ can, can bind quite badly. Uh, you can actually hear this and it makes like a really horrible noise. Um, this also can can really put unnecessary strain on your leaf springs. You can see straight away from looking at this that this is not going to be good for your truck. Um, this can cause leaves to snap or to, to wear excessively quickly and this can knacker your UJs pretty quickly also. When I realised that this was happening to my truck, I originally figured it out because I could hear this horrible noise that I could never quite pin down. So I mounted the GoPro underneath the truck and I could see that this was happening. So I started researching online to try and find out what you can do about it. Um, and uh, I quickly found that the subject of anti-rat bars can be quite a heated debate. Um, some people argued that they are really worth doing. There's arguments over designs. Uh, lots of people argued that they were completely unnecessary altogether. Um, unfortunately, like most things on the internet, it seems to mostly be argued about by people who have either never had axle wrap or never fitted an anti-wrap kit. Um, so, in light of that, I'm not telling you that you need an anti-wrap kit. I'm just saying I've experienced axle wrap like as uh, shown in this sort of poor drawing um, and I'm just going to share with you what I did about it. From looking at the comments of people who have experienced axle wrap uh, across a number of forums it seems to be more prevalent when you're running spring perch over axle however this isn't a rule and some people experience it with perch under axle and some people never experience it uh, even with perch over axle. Um, there's an argument that it's only caused by excessive abuse or that it can simply be cured with brand new leaf springs. Um, I have to say, although I do drive my truck off road quite a bit, I never really abuse it, it's well looked after, I never really drive it too fast, um, you, you know, I I'm, I'm take it uh, pretty carefully really. Uh, that said, I'm also now on my third set of rear leaf springs, um, after all the others were getting ruined through this happening. I did fit a set of brand new front springs and a set of rear springs at the same time. The front springs are still good as new. The rear springs only lasted marginally longer than the other second hand sets that I tried. Another part of the argument is, is what you can actually do about this. Um, some people argue about stiffer leaves or longer perches. Um, and whilst I can see that both would offer a degree of improvement, uh, reducing the flex in your suspension isn't really that desirable. Uh, with an anti-wrap kit, if you make it correctly, you can prevent the axle wrap without impairing the performance of the suspension. Like I say, there are a number of designs, but this is the one that, like I say, there are a number of designs, but this is the one that was most logical to me. Uh, same drawing as before, except this time, there's like an A-frame fitted to the top of the axle casing, uh, which is this little block here would represent a cross section of a, a cross member on the chassis and the A-frame is joined to that by a shackle connected to an arm. What should happen is this time when the axle goes to rotate uh, the top of the A-frame moves backwards and the shackle is also pulled in this direction and then this creates like a tethering effect which stops the axle from rotating backwards any further and limits the limits the amount of axle wrap that can actually um, 
fairly logical solution. The only limitation, of course, is that the axle needs to uh, be able to sort of oscillate uh, as the uh, each of the the rear wheels move up and down, which you can sort of see here. So, so as the uh, you're going over bumps and the wheels are doing this. Obviously the front of the axle where the shackle would sit is attached to a cross section, um, a cross member on the chassis. And with this end attached to the axle, there does need to be this point of articulation. If you look at a link in the description, you can see um, a more detailed write-up of how I made all the individual bits that I needed and what you'd need to do it. Uh, I'll also include some uh, dimensions that work for this. This is a... 1989 Suzuki SJ410 uh, running samurai axles with spring perch over axles so obviously you'd have to make uh, your design accordingly but I can tell you it does work with this and it's probably a good start. Basically I started by fabricating a perch that could be welded onto the top of the axle casing. I then made uh, this A-frame section which would then be able to sit on top of the perch and articulate about the center axis with the two of them fitted together you can see and how that works a section to go in here which again is a hot hollow cylindrical section which takes standard sj shackle bushes again i uh, just machined it all out nicely to fit got a section of cds which i welded in there and then uh, just made these uh, machine on the inside to make it the right size. This again is a standard shackle from a, uh, just a Suzuki Este off the front. And then this shaft um, I welded up so it just li literally joins the mount from up here back through to the perch that I welded on on the uh, axle and the A-frame there. At the other end, um, again, I've just put, these are standard bushes from a SJ shackle which uh, I've machined this out so that they fit in it nicely and then I've just literally machined the pin to go through the middle and that's got an R pin on the other end so I can really easily just pop this off and service it so um, what I'd normally do is just grease up the inside of this bar so that it never jams because obviously going through water and that sort of thing it's, it's an issue. Hopefully that's given you a quick overview of what axle wrap is and how an anti-wrap kit can solve the problem for you. I couldn't find the video of my own truck exhibiting bad axle wrap, but I've included a link in the description to another video which shows it really clearly. If you're not too sure if you're also experiencing the, this problem, you can look at that video and it will show you what to look out for. Here you can now see the wrap kit installed on the truck and you can hopefully see that even though I'm only driving in a field, it's not impairing the movement of the suspension at all. When I give it a little throttle you'll also notice that the kit works exactly as it should with the shackle moving backwards and the tethering effect of the top arm preventing any more axle rotation than I've designed it for. You can also see that I just raised one of the rear wheels in a short stand. Obviously you'd encounter much bigger obstacles than this when off-roading but it just shows the pivot at the base of the A-frame working as it should. Like I say, I'm not saying that you need an anti-wrap kit or that it's the only solution to this problem. I'm just saying that from my experience, axle wrap definitely breaks stuff, and this design has proven to be a good solution. There are many other designs and solutions to this problem floating around on the internet, but I wanted to document what I've actually done myself in the hope it helps anyone else who's in the same situation. I've now done quite a few miles off-road with it, and so far it works exactly as it should. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's definitely worth thinking about um, making your own if you're experiencing the same problem. If you want to have a go yourself, follow the link in the description below for a more detailed write-up, which will include some pointers that might help you get started with making your own.